In part two of our pond drawing here, we are going to be designing a forebay and a sump in the pond. Now just a quick review of what we did in part one. We gathered the area of water, uh, calculated, turned it into a volume of the water that will be draining into the pond. We placed the pond location, again we used some critical thinking, placed it between the road and the houses, made it long and skinny, tried to match City of Calgary standards. Now on the term of standards, I didn't mention it last video, but City of Calgary wants a pond that is about five meters long to one meter wide. We could have probably met that in this video. However, uh, one meter to three and a half meter long, more uh, is closer to the standards than just defining a square pond. And realistically, do we need a pond that's 500 meters long to go 100 meters wide? No. So again, it's just playing around with the shape and size, see what you can fit. So we did our pond berm and our pond floor as well. We got that all designed and figured out. Now let's move on to a pond forebay and the pond sump. We will design the sump first. Now what is a sump? It is the lowest part in the pond. It's a, a, it's a place for dirt and sediment to finally settle out. And it's a smaller area near the south end of the pond. It will be at the south end of the pond for everything to, to settle out to. It is easier to clean out just one little, say, 10 by 10 meter sump than it is the entire pond bottom. So it's a final resting place for dirt and sediment if it makes its way into this part of the pond. Now we already have our pond sump and our pond four base sites. We don't have any surfaces associated with them, so we will make those as we need them. Now we are going to try and attempt to have about a 10 by 10 meter pond sump bottom which if we want it say 750 millimeters deep we're gonna have to do some uh, simple calculations to figure out how wide the top is going to be. So at 5 to 1 is the slope we're going to be using. We have to figure out how far over and how far down set, um, 5 to 1 over and down to equal uh, 0.75 meters deep. So we'll just open up another calculator here and I'm going to take 5 and times it by 0.75. So I want to be 0.75 meters deep, which means my outside berm will be 3.75. Now if we want to confirm this, we can take the 3.75 and translated 5 to 1 is actually 20%. So we can times, oh, not wrong window, times that by 20 divided by 100 gives us 0.75 meters deep. So we'll go back to 3.75. Now if my bottom is 10 meters by 10 meters, I want my top to be 3.75 meters on each side larger. So get that calculator back. So 10 plus 3.75 plus 3.75, which means the top of my, my sump is going to be about 17 and a half meters by 17 and a half meters. This will give us approximately 10 by 10 meter bottom. So I will draw a square. I'm just gonna draw a polyline. We'll do 17.5, 17.5, 17.5, and I'm gonna close that. And I'm given a 17 and a half meter square. I'm gonna move this square and I'm gonna, I will have to rotate it to get it into place because I don't quite know the angle. So I'm just going to move this to here. Endpoint to endpoint. I want to rotate reference. So R for reference at will give me the other. Allow me to select the other side of the square, the endpoint. And I'm just going to line it up. I was trying to line it up to there, but my snaps weren't working. So let me try it again. Rotate, oop, not the surface. Reference at, I'm gonna try it, yeah, I'll snap to the end. So now I have it lined up. I will then move this from the midpoint to the end point there. I will then add an additional vertex. Just click on the polyline, hover over the grip and you can add a vertex because I want my sump to match this outline. And then I'm going to extend, 
turn snaps on, extend this line just down to the vertex of where that and that would be. So try and match it up as close as you can. Just zoom in and snap to nearest. I know it's not 100% accurate, but for this, is this will work for what we need it to. And then snap the other side to the nearest. Again, it's roughly 17 and a half by 17 and a half and zooming in so close, it probably is the same. So now we need to set this feature line to an elevation. So I'm, uh, I don't need a surface yet. I'm going to go grading, create feature lines from objects, hit enter. This will be my pond sump and let's make this one cyan and I want to assign elevations. I want to assign elevations from my pond floor. And I this time I want to insert intermediate grade break points. Because we have designed a pond floor, we don't have very many triangles in this. There's only going to be maybe five extra points added, but we want it to pick up important points like down here and maybe some on the sides. We can delete the ones we don't need. So I will hit okay. And I will click on my feature line then. So it's added this point here, this is the important one, and it's added a couple little ones down here, which we can go ahead and delete, and we can go ahead and delete those two as well. So I'm gonna select that, right click Elevation Editor, and then I will find those points in the list. Okay, I don't need that one, so I'm gonna click on that one, delete it, and again they highlight. I don't need that one, delete it. I don't need that one, delete it. I do need that one, but I don't need that one and delete that one. So now this feature line is sitting on the pond floor. I'm gonna go back into grading, create grading. You may still have this dialog box open. However, my pond, uh, grading group is now going to be my pond sump, sorry. And I need to create a group name. I'm gonna name it pond sump, so they're the same. We'll hit okay. I'm not going to target a surface because we are going to change the grading criteria set. I want to project to an elevation. So I'll select projection to elevation and hit OK. And I want to slope 5 to 1 to elevation. And then we need to figure out that elevation. So I'm going to zoom in. Or actually, I'll just get this from the feature line. It'll be easier. So select your elevation editor on the feature line. We'll find that point there, so 1113.026, 1113.026, and I'll minus the 0.75. So the elevation I want to set this to when I grade is 1112.276, and I'll keep that handy. I want to create grading. So I want to grade this feature line to the inside, applied to the entire length, yes. Grading elevation 1112.276. Now your numbers may be different. We'll hit enter. Cut slope. Minus, uh, we'll just go 5 to 1, 5 to 1. Don't type minus at all. And it is graded down to the elevation I have specified, which should be 0.75 meters deeper than the floor down here. I'm going to immediately explode this. And I'm going to remove some vertexes that I do not need because we want the bottom of this to be completely flat. So I have four vertexes left. I'm now going to create feature lines from the objects. Pond sump, make them cyan and hit OK. I will then select these two feature lines. Right-click, add to surface as a break line. Oh, we have to make a new surface, so we can do that through right here. Pond sump. We'll hit OK. We'll hit OK. We'll hit OK. Again, you can name them if you want. And then we realize that we have indeed told it to match the surface here. However, what we have not done is this should actually curve in a little bit. 
and curve out a little bit. So a quick way to fix that, we're going to say 5 to 1 to elevation, pawn sump, but this time we want a 5 to 1 to surface. Projection to surface, 5 to 1 to surface. We want to target our pond floor and create grading. So I want to grade from here out, apply to entire length, no, because I only want to see from here to here. 5 to 1, 5 to 1. And this spot should now move down here which I can't because it's a circle. So we will need to delete that. And you can insert a PI via the ribbon, grading, or you can do edit visual line geometry, insert PI. I want to insert that one there, hit enter. The one last additional problem we have is this feature line point should be pulled out a little bit to be in line with this. So again, there is multiple ways of, of doing this. However, it doesn't matter which one you do, you're gonna have a little bit of tweaking to do like what I'm doing now in order to make it work properly. If we had started on just the bottom here, uh, we had the pond bottom and we tried to grade upwards, we would then have circled edges that we need to deal with. So either way, there's going to be a little bit of back and forth. And just to show those circled edges, I'm going to take this grading and I'm just going to drag it around the corner, maybe. There. So we have a circled edge, which we would then have to square off. So we would need to figure out where those lines are going and how to square that off properly. So I'm going to delete that line, delete that grading, select this, go back to uh, the very outside feature line, elevation editor. I'm then come to my panorama window and take elevations from surface just to make sure it's still on the pond floor and hit OK. Rebuild my pond sump. And now it looks a little bit more normal as long as we add a boundary. Name it the outer boundary. Select the pond sump. So now I'll just view this in 3D. We have a low point in the bottom of our pond that matches the outside contours. And to view the berm in 3D, we have a low point here as well. If I change this to conceptual, then you can see the triangles. For the pond four bay, we are gonna turn all these surfaces into one master surface and then, and then design our four bay off of that. So I'll just close everything right now. I'm going to freeze my floor. I'm gonna freeze, sorry, my berm and then my floor. I'm gonna freeze my four bay. You may leave the feature lines if you want on. It doesn't really matter here. I will create a new surface. I'm, we'll call it complete pond design. Now, when we're pasting surfaces together, the order here absolutely matters. To show you what I mean, pond, uh, complete pond design, definition, edits, paste surface. I will paste my pond sump in first. So I'll do that, hit okay. All right, we have a pond sump. I will then paste my pond berm surface in. We no longer have a pond sump because as you paste things together, you need to worry about the order of operations. So the first thing I would paste in would be my pond berm. Now I'm not doing my pond floor because the berm mimics the floor, the berm is built off the floor, there's really no need to do it. And if I did, I would get some massive holes over here because, actually I wouldn't, they wouldn't overlap. I mean, so you could do it. If you didn't have the outside berm, you would get a massive hole. So order matters. Start with your pond berm, paste in your sump. We'll paste in the four bay last and we'll join everything together. It's, it's like building Lego from bottom to top. But now that I have done that, 
I could delete the pawn stump, repaste it, or I can go into surface properties, definition, find my pawn stump, move that to the bottom, hit OK, and then rebuild. And that updates my pawn stump. Quickly save my drawing here. And now we're going to design a pawn four bay. Now to show you what a pawn four bay is, I'm just going to go to Google Maps here. And if you're in and around the Calgary area, this is Cross Iron Mills Mall. We'll zoom in to the little interchange here. As I said, they build ponds and interchanges. We'll look at this pond here. We have a, a section over here and we have a section over here. Now when the water flows into the pond, it comes in, flows down the little entrance ditch into an initial area, which we see is a little bit darker, a little bit dirtier. So the pond will flow into what's called a four bay first. And it will either sit there and slowly filter its way through the gravel, through the rocks, into the main pond area. Or it will flow over if we have a heavy rainstorm. But this will trap a lot of the initial sediment. So a lot of the sediment or sediment is going to settle into the forebay area before being, into the, uh, being released into the regular pond. And again, same with a sump. This little area is easier to clean out than an entire pond. So again, you may have a sump, you may not. It's just another piece to show you how grading all fits together, surfaces all fit together. We'll design a four bay. Now ours is just gonna be square and easy. It's not gonna be overly difficult and we're gonna match it based on our high water level. So back to our pond design. We now need to figure out our new high water level because we had one originally of, I believe 1116.2. I've closed the calculator but we can go ahead and figure that out again. It was about half a meter below the top of my, my surface here. So if I hover over my surfaces, and again, don't hover on a contour, you'll get that surface only. Is it the right one? Don't hover over lines that won't tell you the information. I'm gonna hover where there's no contours and no lines. My complete design is 1118.917. That is the top of my pond. I'm going to make my high water level 0.5 meters below that, so 1118.417. Now again, there are multiple ways of doing this. This, I found, has been the easiest way because if you adjust your pond, your high water level will update. I am going to make a new surface, name it pond high water level. We'll hit OK. And again, I'm going to set these for rebuild automatic because it does rebuild things automatically. Be careful with that. Pond high water level, absolutely set to rebuild automatic. Now the reason I do that is because I base the high water level off of this top feature line. So this feature line is added to my pond berm surface. I am also going to add it to my pond high water level surface. We'll hit okay. Just name this high water level. We'll hit okay. I will expand pond, pond high water level, definition, edits, right click, raise lower surface, and I'm going to drop this surface by a half a meter. You cannot see anything on here because we're not displaying contours for this. It's an entirely flat top surface. There's no, and it's flat, there's no contours to display. You could turn on um, a grid if you want. We could display it as a grid just to see it, uh, surface properties. We can do, we'd have to make a new surface style. Let's just quickly copy this. I'll just name this EDDT grid, display grid. And just check the interval 20. Yeah, sure, that's, that works for me. Hit okay, hit okay. So it displays a grid where this surface is. This will print, so just be careful with that. Maybe set, make sure to set it to blank when you're done, but you can physically see the surfaces there. I'm gonna turn that off blank. Now let's find out how much volume this pond currently holds based on our high water level. So I'm going to type in report surface volume and hit enter. I'm going to click new definition, create a new definition. My base surface is my original one, my complete pond design. My comparison surface will be my pond high water level. Now this will mimic what we see in the stage storage. And the reason I'm now not using the stage storage is because we have more of a inside outside pond berm 
and it will get confused when it hits this elevation because it's the same as this elevation here. So it's not going to give us correct numbers. We only can have an inside base and we can't display anything on the outside. So we could remove the outside two feature lines, but this one, this way works as well. You will see a little bit of a cut number. So 550 cubic meters. That is because it's displaying a little bit of volume underneath of the area here, but we don't have to worry about that. We are only concerned about fill. So this pond holds 85,900 cubic meters. We require 83,000. We are still good. We'll lose a little bit of volume when we build the four bay. Now we can start designing our four bay. So the easiest way that I found to do this is I'm going to draw a polyline. I'm going to trace the inside berm feature line from end to end, and I will offset it. Now, depends how big you want the four bay. Let's start with trying to offset at 30 meters and see where we end up. So just before I hit enter, it's going to place the four bay top about there. That might not be enough space for me. So I'm going to run the offset command again and we'll do 50 meters, which might be too big. So let's settle in 40 offset 40. So then I'm going to hit okay. And then I'll delete that original polyline that I drew. I will then offset this four bay by an additional three meters. So we have a three meter berm top on the four bay. We'll go grading, create grading, or sorry, not create grading, grading, create feature lines from objects. Select these two polylines, hit enter. They are pond four bay and let's make them green, black. And then I wanna assign elevations from my pond high water level surface because I want the four bay to be on top of the high water level. And if we elevation editor, 1118.417. That will become important here in a second when we put the grading in. So now I wanna go grading, create grading. My site name, pond four bay, I wanna make a new group, pond four bay. We'll hit okay. Hit okay. I wanna target my complete pond design. Now we have to be very careful with this. We have to make sure we explode the grading after this is done before we add it into the surface. Alternatively, you could target pond berm as well. So the pond berm surface. In fact, let's do that just so we can make sure we're safe here. I wanna grade five to one to the surface, and then I wanna create grading. I wanna grade from this feature line to the north side, yes, five to one, five to one. I wanna grade from this feature line to the south side, yes, five to one, five to one. Now we see we have some blue grading objects and some red grading objects. Because we targeted the pond high water level surface, we are technically under the berm over here. So I'm gonna select this feature line and I'm gonna drag it to the end point where those two meet. And I will do the same for all four ends of the feature line. Try not to snap to your surface. Be very careful when you're snapping here. Notice I'm snapping to that grading line, which has an elevation at that point. We'll do the same over here. So we should see blue only. I will then explode these two. Grab these two and it, feel free to weed out some of these points if you want. Again, not necessary. Grading, create feature lines from objects. Pond four bay, we don't have to sign elevations, but let's sign a, the color, hit okay. I put a description if you want, but now we can right click, add to surface as a break line. We don't have the pond four bay, so let's create it. Pond four bay and hit okay. I'm, We'll put a description in these, palm four bay inside, outside. I don't know if it'll let me do the slash, but we'll hit okay. And now I'm gonna layer freeze the pond four bay so I can paste it into my completed pond design to make sure everything is correct. So expand pond design definition, right click paste surface, pond four bay and hit okay. 
So we now have a four bay, we now have a sump, we have one master surface for everything to be placed into. So we're gonna view this in 3D. However, I'm gonna exaggerate this a little bit. So I'm gonna right click edit surface style. I'm first gonna go under contours, 3D geometry, exaggerate elevations, we'll go two and a half times. I will then go under triangles, exaggerate by two and a half and hit okay. I will then select my surface Actually, before I do that, I'm going to save. Select my surface, object viewer. So now when we view this, there is a little bit more definition. It's, it's stretched vertically, so this is not the way it will look when it's built. But this gives you a good idea of what your pond will look like. So up here, our highway travels along right here. And maybe I can uh, show that as well. So I'll just hit escape. No need for you to do this, just to show you. So if I select my highway, just to turn the layer on, and I will also make sure this is exaggerated by two and a half. It's exaggerated by five, so I'll make it match. So object viewer these. We have our highway right here beside the pond, so the water will flow down the ditch. It will come through a little, an additional ditch into the four bay, and we should have an outlet from the road, an inlet into the pond, and an outlet through the four bay into the pond. However, that's just four additional sites, four additional grading groups, four additional things that can possibly go wrong to cause crashing in your drawing. We'll just keep it, I'm going to say simple for now, even though this is more of a complicated design. It'll flow into the pond settle out the sediment and then flow into the regular pond and then we have provided an additional area for sediment to settle at the bottom of the pond. So that was part two of this video where we did the four bay, we did the sump, and then we played around some of the high water level stuff. We created a high water level, checked our volumes again. Now let's just do that one more time. Report surface volume to find out how much of a difference that four bay made. So new definition, I want pond, complete pond design. I want pond, pond high water level. We're now down to 83,365 cubic meters. So I believe we lost about 500 cubic meters because of that four bay. So again, not a big deal. And we can actually tell the exact number by comparing the pond berm to the pond four bay. So maybe we lost Oh, we lost, sorry, two and a half thousand because we were at 85,000 before. So we're right at that 83,000. Now, again, that was doing a quick pond design. Just rinse and repeat the steps for the, the uh, inlets and outlets from the pond. Create new grading groups, create new sites. Make sure you keep everything separate. Part three of this video, we'll be placing this into a title block. It'll be put doing the alignments for it and setting up a completed plan view pond cleanup with some survey points.